Okay, let's look at configuring syslog and NTP. Now, syslog is something that we are going to use to capture our log messages. By default, logging kind of happens on the local device, and it logs to the console. We want to actually log back to a central point. And we can set all of our devices here to log back to a central point so that we can get, uh, so we can coalesce all those logs together. Now that's really useful because then if we want to see what's going on in our network, we can go to that syslog server and we can view all of that there. Um, NTP we use to synchronize clocks. And by synchronizing clocks across all of our network devices, then we know that we have accurate uh, timestamps on all of our logging messages. And there's a few other reasons for having synchronized clocks, but that's a big one. Okay, let's talk about our network for a minute. You can see the devices we have laid out here, a server, a PC, a switch, um, a couple of routers, and you can see the IP addresses that we have on every one of them. Now, if you want to follow along, in the description below uh, this video, in the description of this video, is a link that will let you download the packet tracer file and you can follow along. Now, on this server, we have, let me go to services, and we have... NTP configured, and you'll see that we have NTP turned on. We're not using authentication at the moment. You can see the time and the date. We also have syslog turned on, but you'll see we haven't captured any syslog messages yet. Okay, let's start with R1. So in R1, I'm going to go to my CLI. I'm going to start by looking at my clock. So I'm going to issue the command show clock. That's going to tell me that it thinks it's, you know, two minutes after midnight, March 1st, 1993. That's clearly not accurate. So I'm going to go to config T and I'm going to set my NTP server. And the command is NTP server and then the IP address that we want it to pull the time from. Now there's a handful of other NTP commands that we can use here. So if we use NTP master, we can make this thing a server. We can set NTP authentication. But the only thing we really need is NTP server if we want this to pull time from somewhere else. Now, it takes a little bit for this to happen. So if I do a show clock right now, you'll see it hasn't updated yet. But I can also do show NTP associations. And that will show me my association. And right here, you'll see we have an offset. Well, that offset is the difference between what time the server thinks it is and what time our device thinks it is. Now, that will update. We've just got to give it a few minutes. You will see that we have connected with this particular uh, NTP server address. So while we're waiting for that to update, let's come to R2. And in R2... I want to make sure that I can get to, whoops, uh, I want to make sure that I can get to that device. I don't think I've set up my routing here yet, so I'm going to check it real quick. Ping 192.168.0.5, and we'll see if we can get to our NTP server, and we can't. So I'm going to issue the command. I'm going to go to global config, and IP route 192.168.0.0. We'll give it a slash 24 net mask. It's going to go through 192.168.1.1. All right, now I should be able to get there. So now I'll do NTP server 192.168.0.5. And then if I show NTP associations, we'll see that we are still initializing, but we have uh, configured that server. Now you can also show NTP status. And that will show you the status of it as well. Clock is currently unsynchronized. And then a bunch more information. Now, if we give it a while, it is going to pick it up. Let's come back over to R1 and let's see if it has picked up our clock yet. So I'm going to do show NTP associations. And now it says our um, reference clock step and showing the offset as zero. So if I do a show clock, you can see that our clock has been updated. And now thanks, it's May 26, 2020, 324 p.m. Okay, so that's how we configure NTP. Now the next thing we want to do is talk about configuring syslog. And syslog is how we manage our logging. So I can do show logging and it will show me my current logging configuration. So to configure it, I'm going to go to config T. I'm going to issue the command 
logging. And I'm going to do a login question mark. So we can set logging to the console, to a host, to a specific IP address. We can set the logging trap levels. So I'm going to do logging to 192.168.0.5. And that's going to set it to log to that device. Now the other thing we can set is the logging trap levels. Now, being in Packet Tracer, we're kind of limited here because I can only set logging to severity 7, which is debugging. And normally, you're going to want that down closer to 4. The higher the number, the more aggressive the logging is. The more aggressive the logging is, the more things it's going to log. Um, but being in Packet Tracer, we're kind of limited to that. The other command that you'd probably want to use frequently is going to be logging source. And basically, you set a logging source. And you'll notice the Packet Tracer doesn't support that either. Um, we'd set a logging source, and then we'd set the... Um, IP address that we wanted to use as the source. That way we know, like this device, show IP interface brief, we've got multiple IP addresses. By setting a logging source, we can say always log from this IP address, if that's the one that we want. And then it's always going to send logs from that IP address. That's just going to simplify our life. All right, now I can log to another device across my network as long as I have IP connectivity to it. So I can come here. Let's do a show clock, and we'll see that that has indeed updated. Config T, logging 192.168.0.5. Now if I do show logging, Logging to host, 192.168.0.5, CLI initiated, system login information, which, again, we haven't generated a whole lot. So let's try to generate some. Here you see logging to, which port we're using, auditing disabled, authentication is disabled, two message lines logged. Okay, let's check our server here and go to syslog. And look at this, we are starting to get logging information coming through here. Now it's giving us the time, which is not actually displaying for us. It's giving us the message, it's giving us the host that it's coming from. Let's do this. I'm going to go into R1. And I'm going to go to interface G00. And I'm going to shut it down. And then I'm going to bring it back up using the command no shutdown. And I should bring it back up. Now if we go back in and we look at our syslog again, you'll see that we now have more information including interface down and interface up. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how logging works. We now track this information, keep it here, and then we can come into our syslog server and view what's going on on our network, rather than having to go from device to device. It's basically an event log for your network. Now, a couple of things we got to know about it. In order for this to work, we have to have a syslog daemon running. And in this case, I've got it sitting on a server. It actually doesn't have to be. You can install syslog, a syslog daemon or a syslog server on a workstation. Packet Tracer does not support that at the moment. But if you go out and you Google syslog server, you'll find a bunch of them. They're free downloads. And one of my favorites has TFTP server and syslog and a couple of other things running on. And it's great and it's easy to use. And so you can take your management uh, station, whatever your workstation is, and you can set up syslog on it and just make sure to have syslog running. Then you can have all of your devices log their information back to your workstation, and then you get a chance to review all those logs. Okay, that is how we set up NTP and syslog logging on Cisco devices.